Watch the movie Battle for Sevastopol last night. It's a uh, 2015 Russian-Ukrainian release. So yeah, these countries uh, can work together in spite of everything that's going on. I think the Russian title is uh, Bitva za Sevastopol. But yeah, at any rate, uh, you know, sometimes you just watch these uh, movies that just move you and make you think. And you just have to talk about them after, right? Uh, or during. <laughs> Try watching movies with me. Sometimes I talk too much during and that I just slap myself across the face, right? But, you know, it's um, this is an interesting picture and an angle that we don't get too much from World War II. So you sometimes get a little bit from the German angle, although mostly just right following the war, uh, that side of the narrative was very quickly buried uh, with trials and everything, as uh, you may be aware of. Uh, but you get a lot of the uh, Allied forces, a lot of that point of view. You very rarely get the uh, Soviet angle. There are some really, really impressive uh impressive russian and soviet era movies uh their take now granted mind you um when you're talking war picks um you're usually never stripped of propaganda that's just how it is but it's just interesting to see um what the takeaway is for that audience in that country um, those things and uh What's interesting about the battle for Sevastopol is that it's centered around this character who was a real real life figure actually, Yudmila Pavlichenka. So this uh, also called uh, the um, Lady Death, I think. Let me, let me just really quickly double check that um, name. Yeah, Lady Death. That's what they called her. So she was a quite impressive female sniper. Um, in the uh, Soviet army, locked in over 300 kills within, let's see the time frame here. Yeah, well, years of service is listed as a, quite a, a broad. And this was just a, within, I think, uh, a year or two or even less where they uh, had the uh, the battles of it was first the Battle of Odessa and then they lost Odessa and retreated to Sevastopol and and uh, ended off there pretty pretty tragic losses of some of these uh, cities uh, a lot of uh, tremendous amount of civilian casualties on top of uh, soldiers and uh, service personnel and medical personnel that lost their lives. But yeah, so at any rate, the uh, the movie uh, it allows itself for a lot of creative license in regards to the the life of the person, if you will. Um, you read a uh, quick Lyudmila's um, biography. Her life seems to have been kind of just uh, taken apart and, and changed up a little bit for probably for the sake of uh, drama and just to intensify the effect of the war on the life of the main character as portrayed in the movie. Not that I really have much of a problem with that because the sense that they're doing it, it just uh, reminds you sort of of the severity uh, war can have on, upon a life. And uh, I don't think uh, I think there is a um, malintent in in crafting the message like that because that is very much a reality. So in this movie, you just see people whose lives, dreams, and aspirations get repeatedly um, thrown thrown all over and destroyed, and, and every tiny little thing they would. Uh, want as the bright spot in their life gets repeatedly pulled from underneath them uh, that's uh that's something that truly makes you think now there's a uh, you know in the movie and this is this is kind of an interesting point um gender discussion now a lot of people think seem to think that i have uh you know this uh firm orthodox sense uh, stance in that regard which i don't um 
So yeah, so in the in the movie they already very early on, oh, well, shooting a gun that's not for women, um, competing when they're competing out in the range. But see, I beg to differ there, and uh, I, you know, I've shot guns since I was a kid, and I've seen uh, women shoot guns, and I'd be the first guy to admit that you know if you uh, you hand a light weapon to a woman, you have her shoot you know, position shooting. Yeah, she's. She's uh she's gonna shoot like uh, uh I don't know what uh, I don't know what adjective I would put but uh but there's something about the uh finesse of uh femininity that makes a lot of women really really specific precise marksmen so no problem believing that a uh a woman with finesse in, in body movement and control of her uh, body can be a very, very good sniper. And even with a lot of the men that I've known who are really good at sniping, a lot of them are just really light and it's like they almost don't breathe, they almost don't move when they breathe. So, yes, I'm, um, I just, yeah, then there's this whole other discussion about uh, whether <laughs> you should put women on the front lines and everything and uh this you know this very old uh tendency for us men to be uh protectors and uh you know lay down our lives that that being a, a part of being a man is that when uh when uh life puts you in that decision that situation and it's called for then yeah you have to just suck it up and lay down your life to protect something a lot of us men um, know this duty in our bones that nature demands that of us. So uh, maybe a part of why we sometimes seem so stern, distant, and cold. But hey, that's life. But yeah, at any rate, you know, if you do decide to have a mixed military, or in this case, um, against an enemy <laughs> that you can't stand a chance against unless you have. Uh, every hand on deck that can move uh and there's anything that women can excel at that that would be uh, precision shooting and uh i've actually <laughs> had a similar experience myself went with a friend uh once and that was her first time ever shooting a gun and uh we were shooting nine millimeter beretta and, and to a guy like me, I'm a big bulky guy. That's like a, it's like a tiny little piece. It's a toy gun, you know? So uh, it's, it's like, you know, it's, with this bulky frame, I'm not too precise with something like that. And uh, yeah, I admit it. She uh, she outshot me like crazy. If that was a competition, she would have had me in uh, tailing in last place and we're way behind her. Because uh, in her first go, it's like that gun just, that, uh, just really... Uh, it was like they, they read each other. They got along. She shot like a champ. Yeah, sometimes that's like that. But you hand me a, a big power tool. Yeah, I'm uh, going to do something serious with that. On long range. I, uh, <laughs> I also enjoy that. It's shooting targets and uh, moving things is something very different than pointing idea of pointing it at people even you know with hunting you know if you're hunting for food that's one thing if you're just for the sake of shooting something you know quite frankly I've never gotten that to hunt to eat yeah if you're gonna take something out of, na out of nature you have to honor it it's the cycle Norse understand that cycle um, but, uh, yeah, it was just, there was just a whole bunch of stuff. I don't want to spoil this picture. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there to, uh, to, you know, that, that really got me thinking and really interesting to people. So I'm curious about different types of cinema. Now, I, I will say one thing. I spent a lot of time scouting around, uh, finding proper subtitles for, for the uh, the less uh, less Russian capable 
And uh, it was just really tricky to find decent uh, subtitles. Should have, should have seen my sister-in-law watching that thing. She's a native speaker, and she was just flipping around in, uh, <laughs> in the couch. Uh, yeah. Uh, still, in spite of it, it's, uh, you get the, uh, in spite of bad subtitles, you, you'll still get the core, core message of the, the movie. Uh, yeah, dialogue's going to be bashed up. It was, it was bashed up to, to a point where even I got it with my crappy Russian. But, um, but yeah, in spite of that, there's uh, beautiful acting going on there, and I think they, they really managed to get the story across in, in such a way that even with butchered dialogue. And you see, here's the thing, you know, with a really good movie, really proper movie, you shouldn't even need the dialogue. You should just be able to look at it um, through sets, the editing, physical and visual expressions of the people you should be able to turn down the volume and uh, still get it and uh, and that's definitely they really the they ace this one on that level and uh, to be fair you know if you haven't watched a lot of uh, Russian movies then maybe you should uh, consider looking into it because they they tend to do some pretty impressive cinema over there especially uh, if you want an alternative to Hollywood, I think it's very worth looking into. It might not, they might not always have the, the takes that uh, speak to you. They might be culturally in in a place or a mindset that, you, you know, is somewhat distant from you, depending on um, where you're from and uh, what your background is. But, um, but still... For the sake of getting something different that is really beautifully crafted and it's with a high degree of professionalism, and yeah, there's a there's a lot of beautiful stuff going on in Russian cinema. The same for a lot over in uh, Asia and various places in Europe. Well, it's, it's a lot out there. Actually. And this is this is very surprising. Um, I find that a lot of uh, art house movies and a lot of uh, Western cinema has become very politicized uh, to a point where I would have never thought I'd ever say this some 15 years ago. But I actually am starting to lean towards the uh, the hunch that Russian cinema is now the less politicized cinema. And uh, yeah, that should. That should actually make you halt and, and wonder and, and think for a little bit. Yeah, they've got some... Anyways, I'll um, some links to IMDb and, and stuff for this. Um, and uh, <laughs> wonderful song from the movie, which actually uh, was written by an uh, American musician back in the day when... Uh, the actual Lady Death came on a public visit to the U.S. Um, that song is just uh, the 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 lyrics on top of the cheerful music. Yeah. Well, anyways, you'll hear it. Um, it's called uh, Miss Pavlichenko. Just, just listen to the song. It's it's an absolute treat in its own right. And uh, yeah. Uh, if you ever have a chance, uh, I recommend checking out the as I listed before. We're into something very different. If you're a geek on uh, World War II affairs or geopolitics or what have you, or uh, or if you just want to uh, broaden up your uh, your scope and horizon a little bit, so uh, uh, I do believe that there's always gain in that. Checking out stuff that you yourself would have not intuitively uh, thought of or found. And I love it when people bring me all these kind of things. And I'm just like, I, myself, as me, would have never thought or Googled or searched my way to this. But because I know so-and-so, and I know plenty of people who are very different from me, they sometimes bring this stuff. And I'm like, oh, where did that come from? Interesting. And, you know, that's that's the value of actually 
getting along with people who are very different from you, even people you disagree with about most things. Is that you know, get a bit of a broader horizon. It's almost as if you kind of climb that little cognitive mountain and you see a little bit more of the ocean each day with each step up there. Uh, you know, well, I can only speak for myself, but to me, there is beauty in that. Anyways, enough of my ramblings for now, talking for 15 minutes. There are like three minutes about the It's just total friggin' nonsense because I hope I didn't waste your time too much. At any rate, for now, biking out.